This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Delighted with the ever so busy Shane McGuigan. How are we doing, mate? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. Patiently waited for quite a long time, so, yeah. yeah so do everything to get my bit with you, mate. Um, you know, it's a busy, a busy ne next week's a busy period for you. We're here for the Adam Azeem Media Day. Um, you know, a big kickoff to a big 2023 for him. Yeah, we're looking to get him out five times this year, so um, it's the start of many uh, media days and also many fights. So, uh, got a Santos Rare 12 0 guy that's uh, unbeaten um, coming to win, which is what we want. Um, and hopefully, it can be the, a, a good start to a successful year for Adam and also the stable. You know, Caroline's on the card, Hassan's on the card, so uh, it can be a busy, busy night. I was just saying about Santos Reyes is not, not an opponent people will know much about, um, but I was talking to Ben and he was talking about, you know, how hard it is to get British opponents for Adam Azeem. Is it frustrating as a team where, you know, these British opponents just sort of don't really want to fight him? It is frustrating, but also it's understandable, you know, for their career, they could stretch their career, maybe four or five fights, maybe six, seven fights, but, and if they get knocked out and humiliated in their eyes by someone like Adam then where can they go really from there so you have to understand it it's a, it has to it has to suit both sides um, but but we're going to keep asking Ben to deliver and hopefully he can for someone like Adam where he's getting so pushed you know as a promotion like boxer um, do you feel like you know it's it's hard for him to sort of try and not get caught in all the hype and try and take it step by step I mean, he loves boxing. You know what I mean. When he's not, when he's not here, he's literally on his phone watching boxing, watching highlights of Mayweather, Canelo. He's a, he's, he lives it, lives it and breathes it. So, um, yes, there's going to be a lot of people gassing him up when he goes home to Slough and even around, the, around the towns. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's going to be part and parcel of being a, a fighter. You know, especially headlining on Sky Sports and stuff like that. He's going to get a lot of recognition. Uh, but we have to just reassure him that he's not there yet. He's keep learning and keep developing but he's the one that wants to come back into the gym on the Monday after a fight so that's always a good time. How important is it as a role for you to, I know he keeps grounding himself but the, to make sure that as a trainer you're pushing him on the right track and you're giving him these these you know pushing him every day. Yeah look you know also we you know we train and manage him as well so just making sure that you know um, yes like when he's when he's when he's training there's a there's a target in sight, whether it's a fight, um, you know, breaking things down, trying to develop things, trying to develop all aspects of his game. And then also from a commercial standpoint, from a management standpoint, getting him the right fights to build his brand. And um, that's, you know, that's something I really would have loved to have got like a Sam Maxwell fight, but turned it down. Um, a lot of the other domestic guys have turned it down. Um, but Santos Reyes look, from Nicaragua, those guys always come to have a, have a fight, and that's he doesn't know how to lose. We could have potentially got someone from America that would have come over, talked a good game, like what Robbie Davies had with Hank Lundy, and he knocks him out in two rounds. But really, like as soon as they get hit on the chin, they're like they're, they've been there before, they've been down, and there's not really a lot that can come off the back of it. At least this guy is unbeaten, he doesn't know how to lose, and he's going to give it his all. And hopefully, we can get sorry, we can get like three, four rounds. Yeah, yeah, free, free, yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, to ha to have that and seeing someone like Santos Reyes, where it's a it's a person that people don't know a lot, you know. Like we look at a good example being someone like Maurizio Lara, you know. I'm not, I know Josh Warrington, you know, is a little was a little bit more established, but he wasn't someone who was very well known. But you could potentially have someone like Santos Reyes who's going to come over and he'll potentially try and make a statement over a win against like Adam Azim. Yeah, and you know, from what I've seen, he's decent enough on the back foot and he, and he can punch in combination as well so um, he doesn't look massive for the weight but that might make him take a better shot a lot of the time when they're stretched down on the weight they're, they're really tight at the weight they, they can't as soon as they get hit on the chin they, they, they've been starving themselves for weeks on end and they, 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 uh, they can't hold up but I, I feel like I've got a feeling that this could go into you know five rounds maybe six rounds and that's literally what we need but that's um, you know that's what that's what Adam's Adam needs. He needs to break fighters down, not just hit them with one shot and 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 dissect them on the jab, hurt them to the body, and these things is you know like because he's so explosive. When he does hit people, I mean the other day he literally knocks he knocked three sparring partners out, like in one sparring session, knocked three out. Like yeah, three people turned up, three people got knocked out, and it was like. I've, 
I've never seen that. I genuinely have never seen that. Like, you know, consistently happening all the time. So I know when he has the eights on that it's just a different different story when these guys even get clipped. They they just could skim them, hit them in the neck and think, oh, I'm, I don't want the next one to go. I'm just going to take it, just get to the canvas. <laughs> so hopefully we can get some rounds out of this guy. And to have a stable like this and his brother Hassan as well, um, how special is that and how positive is that to have an environment where you're brushing shoulders with, with, with you know, world-class fighters day in, day out? It's, yeah, I feel like it's really important, you know, like, um, yeah, it'll be, it's, he come down as by Luke Campbell originally as well, so he, 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 he'd been in my camp even when he was 18 years of age, so um, you got Chris who's just he's been in the gym five and a half years I think now, so really seasoned, seen it all, done it the hard way as well, gone from small hall shows coming through, he's now headlined twice on Sky Sports, going to fight for a world title. Um, it's you just got you got so many different personalities and so many different styles, and it, it, it's it's great for young fighters. You know, when I had Josh Taylor coming through, for instance, and Chantel Cameron coming through, we had uh, George Groves in the gym, we had uh, Frampton in the gym, we had uh, you know uh, David Hay as well, even at one stage. So like those fighters are looking up to them, and next thing you know, they're there. And then the next wave's coming through. So it's um, for Adam. I think it's gonna, it's gonna see it, see it, It's gonna happen really quick. How, how realistic of a statement would it be where I'd say Adam Azim could be pushing for for world honours towards the end of the year? At the end of the year, I want him to hold a decent title, whether it's like a European title or some form of major title like that, uh, and then and get ranked. You know, I'd like the Anthony Igor fight at the end of the year. Um, he's fought for a while. He boxed Baranchek, put up a decent fight. Boxed Rolly Romero, Romeo, um, as well. So that's going to be a good, that's a fight that we, he's he's asked for. So we're going to try and get that probably September. So that's where we want to be. And then in, and then in December he'll box again. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like going into 2024, he, I wanted to be ranked in the governing bodies on the world scene. Sorry, what name was you saying there? I just missed that. Yeah, get Johansson. Yeah, get he box at Ivan Baranchek. So, um, yeah, I, I'd also like him to fight for a European title as well. So, we've got a lot of high hopes for him. Hopefully, he stays injury free and we can continue to to, to push him on. Moving on, um, this past weekend we had um, Anthony Yard versus Arta Betibiev. From a trainer's point of view, I just wanted to know what was your sort of thoughts on Tunde decided to pull Anthony Yard out of the fight? Right decision. Yeah, he was one shot away. Um, a fight will always feel like they're ready and they're about to, you know, go winging. I heard an interview saying Anthony Hardy said he got hit and he was like, got up and thought, fuck it, let's just give it a go. But he was tired. You know, he was he was tired after about three, four rounds. Um, he was really, really trying to throw big shots. Thought he thought he had a better be of um, hurt a few times. Not too sure. I feel like uh, he was just playing safe, knowing that he could hear him huffing and puffing. Um, but the experience was not there. He hadn't had any acid tests. He hadn't. He, he lost uh, um, Kovalev, and then he lost uh, Lyndon Arthur, and then he rebound and boxed enough. But then he just jumped straight in with, you know, he's not the undisputed, but he's the, you know, he's three, three, got three belts. So um, pound for pound, one of the best punches on the planet. You know, it's like, there was no Joe Smith, so there was no guys that were like acid test. I, maybe they just thought we didn't want to risk that because we got beaten by Linda Narfel. But you need those fights, and those fights you learn how to pace yourself, learn how to you know how to fill the gaps and feints and hold the hands out and touch the jabs rather than everything being loaded and dipping and whipping every shot. Like you can't fight like that. You just you gas out and you know uh, better be if he he was he was. Moving off the line, great feet. Got caught far too many times. Everyone thinks he's, everyone thinks Callum Smith's going to chin him and he's shot to pieces. But he's definitely slowed down a little bit. But but he just fought a sensible fight. When you're working a corner, when do you feel like the right time it is to pull someone out of the fight? You know, we can an example being you know Dubois versus Lorena after that first round. You know, he was heavily compromised and, and you sort of took the risk and then it, it paid off in the end. But when do you feel like as a trainer would be the right time to potentially pull someone out of the fight, make that decision? Every fight's different. Every every scenario is different. Do you know what I mean? With Daniel, 
um, we, we proved to be the, definitely the correct decision. You know, he, he, he walked him onto a fantastic right hand. And I know that Daniel's got that much hep, much weight in his hands, um, but his knee wasn't right, <laughs> you know, uh, and he was, yeah, his knee was in a bad way. Um, so, so, you know, it could, if it had gone the other way, it would, like, if, if, if he'd have twisted it and, and done even more damage to, to it, for instance, I probably would have been under scrutiny, but I wasn't, because it was exactly the right thing. Um, so, and then, I don't know, other, other times, like, you know, I remember with Josh Taylor, like, when he boxed um, Regis Progay, massive welt on his eye, couldn't really see out the right side, but he won those last rounds, and that's what swung the fight, you know, and you just, you have to, you know, you, you, you have to, um, you have to risk it at the top level, you know, and that's what these guys train to. And, and it's not, it's not down to you to make a selfish decision because you don't, like, you know, you, oh, you've got to pull them out. It's like, but at the same time, you have to make you have to make decisions for their best interest, and and that's how you, you have to just know that athlete and know that fighter. And I've never really had concussions in my gym, like even all the sparring, I've never had a concussion in my gym, and that, like, I've seen guys buzzed a little bit but not really and then they come back and you just you get to know them through the sparring you know that's that's the most important uh, time because then when it goes underneath the lights you're looking into their eyes and if they're not right you have to pull fight so um, yeah it's just about just about knowing the individual do you feel like sometimes like when there's a fight potentially going a certain way um, how big is like you talk about you have to take risks at the top level is there like do you feel like there's that pressure on your shoulders to take to make those big risks um, yeah, but I mean, like you just got you got to tactically get it right. I mean, I remember like George Groves dislocated his shoulder in the 12th. Do you know what I mean? But we'd done so much great work to then it was like just fucking get through the round, you know. And then obviously David snapped his Achilles, and it was like, well, you can sit and time time this guy. But you know, I should have pulled him out a few rounds before that. But I was sitting there with Jimmy Tibbs and myself, and and you know. And David was compass mentis. He was there. He was in the fight. It wasn't like he was like he he, did, he wasn't getting he hadn't lost his you know consciousness or anything like that. He was just trying to walk him on, get, trying to feel the <laughs> feel his foot, see how much pressure he could push off that leg. But that was a, you know that was a, a good night. You know we we did, we did you know we like he didn't he didn't come out with any long lasting damage. But you know his Achilles had gone. So so that was just a, a tough one. But. Yeah, you just have to know the scenario and just and, and go with your gut, as it were. You know, go with it, go with the gut. So, um, and that's that's part of being a coach. Just to finish off, um, a Cody revealed in an interview that you wouldn't, he won't be working with you for his fight of David Light. He said no hard feelings, and, and I'm sure sure that is the case. You know, it's just that you didn't really want to relocate to wherever he was training. Yeah, he's given up his UK residency. He's living out in Dubai and stuff. So that was always going to be quite a. A big obstacle for us to overcome, um, and you know it's uh, yeah. I mean, there's no absolutely no hard feelings with, with me and Lawrence. So, you know, I wish him all the best. Um, I, I think he's out doing a bit of work in Florida with Sugar Hill, so it's not like he's going to be training himself. He, you know, he's going to try and get himself with a, with a good coach, but and maybe we could potentially work in the future. But for now, it's like I've got a five-month-old baby. I've got seven fighters in the gym: Adam, Hassan, Chris, who's about to fight for a world title. Um, Ellie, Caroline, Daniel, Robbie Davies. So like, I can't just lift people and just say, all right, we're going out to train abroad for six weeks. It's just going to be a massive expense for everyone else. So um, look, we, we we tried our best to try and come to a uh, solution, but it's it was his decision to to move out to Dubai, and I, I wish him all the best. He did mention in, in this interview, he mentioned Chris Billum Smith um, a couple of times and he was saying that he was friends with him. But was there ever a worry as a trainer, you know, when they were both training in the gym that they could potentially, you know, these guys could potentially fight each other. There might be a like, bit of a conflict of interest in the end, like when they were training together. Or? It's not really a conflict of interest because they both develop so much with each other, you know, and that's and that's the thing. It's, it's a very fine line. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't think I don't think that fight will ever really materialise. But. Um, and look, Lawrence and, and Chris, they, they get on. Do you know what I mean? So, um, and if it did, I, I wouldn't. I don't think I'll be going to the press conference. I'll just be sitting back. But it's a bit of a shame that he has mentioned Chris's name because, like, sentimentally, he sh he should know that you know 
they've both developed and helped each other on. Do you know what I mean? And I think really, if you, he would probably rather fight React Paul, and so would Chris. So there's plenty of people out there for them to box. So. Yeah. Well, honestly, Fane, really, Shane, really appreciate your time, mate, and all the best for you know the future and February 11th. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you.